In this how-to video, we'll see how to use Embarcadero's RAD Server Enterprise Mobility Services EMS to send remote push notifications using C++ Builder and C++ Code. Push notifications is exposed by the RAD Server's Enterprise Mobility Services as a custom resource like we see here in the EMS server with a resource name of push and an endpoint called send. Push notifications is just one of the many core functions of the application services built into RAD server. The application services are a collection of ready to use built-in services to power your application. And push notifications is just one of the included core functions of RAD server's application services. Some of the other core functions are user directory and user management, user location tracking, and built-in data storage. Push notifications in RAD server is a mobile technology that allows the RAD server to send a notification to an application installed in a phone or tablet client using either iOS or Android using specific services provided by Apple for iOS and Google for Android. And the push notifications show up like app notifications and can be sent to the device and seen by the user even if the application is not currently running. The push notification carries extra content in the form of a JSON data structure that can be used to instruct the app what to do when the notification is received, either directly as the application is running or upon application startup if the application is not running and the user clicks on the notification itself to open the app. Calling the push endpoint, as we'll see, is wrapped in a specific component, allows a client application to trigger a notification for a specific user's device or all users who subscribe to a specific resource or broadcast to all users registered in the RAD server. We'll also show you the ready to use component for receiving notifications in VCL and multi-device FireMonkey applications. Now before you can use push notifications with iOS and Android, you need to set up push notification messaging service for Android and iOS for EMS backend service. For Android, you will create the Google Cloud Messaging project number and API key that you need for Google Android push notification. For iOS, if you have administrative privileges with your developer Apple account, then you can create your own iOS app ID and certificate by following the steps on the same DocWiki page for setting up the messaging service. After completing the steps for setting up the messaging service, you need to edit your emsserver.ini configuration file to add your iOS push notification certificate and Google Cloud Messaging API key. In the emsserver.ini configuration file, you have a section called Server Push Google Cloud Messaging. And here is where you, you will add your Google Cloud Messaging API key. And this setting is needed to send push notifications to an Android device. The next section called Server Push Apple Push Notification Service. Here is where you will add your iOS push notification certificate and this setting is needed to send push notifications to an iOS device. And that's all that's needed in the configuration file to allow the RAD server to send push notifications. Let's now look at a VCL and FireMonkey multi-device app that shows using RAD server EMS sending push notifications. So for push notifications like you see here, uh, we can even use VCL client apps to send push notifications to uh, to mobile connected apps to EMS servers or they can be they can be FireMonkey multi-device apps. This running on my Android tablet looks like this. So in in XE8 we added uh, push notification support inside of EMS for both Google Cloud Messaging and Apple push notifications. So you can have a mix of devices registered into EMS and it's very simple to do the registration. 
I'm going to say the most coolest new feature we put inside of VMS is is be able to, to do uh, push notifications. But it's very critically important for these mobile architectures because it's the, it's the only way it's the conduit to notify mobile applications even when they're not running uh, on the device. So what's cool about that? There's no there's no backward no background thread that's needed. Uh, part of the Google Cloud messaging and Apple push notifications does all of this push notifications for us. We give you this ready-to-use component called push events, and this is what it needs to uh, do the push notification. So the only two components I have on here to enable me to do push notifications, one is the EMS provider, like we saw before, give me the IP address and the port of where uh, the EMS server is running. And then we drop a push events on here, and we just connect the, the provider name of push events to the EMS provider. And then push events has a event called push events received. So if the EMS sends out the push notifications and then when the client receives the push notification, it triggers this push events push received. And here at the very low level, we, we package up that push notification either coming from uh, Apple push notification or from the Google cloud messaging. So it's as simple as that. Even the basic default EMS server includes push notifications right out of the box. We, we pre-configure this for you. So then you can create applications to, to send push notifications. So if I now go to the application we created and I click its test connection just to make sure I can c connect to the backend server, EMS server. If I click on register the installation, uh, it registers this device to the EMS application. So now at this point, the fact that EMS knows about this device makes it easy for me to send out push notifications. So one nice way to do it, uh, in addition to the EMS console, we give you an EMS management console that we can check authentication, log into it, and we can send push notifications. So I'll just do this very quickly again. Hello, where do I want to send it? So these are all my Android devices that have been configured, that have been installed on here. And when I say go send it, it sends it out there. And we see how easy it is to send a push notification to Android. And the same thing works with, uh, with Apple on iOS devices. And you saw in the EMS uh, configuration file, I needed to go up to, uh, to Google and, and create a a Google Cloud messaging uh, ID, and I also need an Apple push notification certificate to allow me to do this to, to iOS devices. Same thing we can do from a, from a VCL application also. So here's a VCL application. Uh, the only two things I need to drop onto a VCL application to, to send push notifications to client is once again drop the EMS provider on here, tell it where my EMS server is running, IP address and port. Now here we have the back end push component. This is a component for requesting a push notification, not receiving it. And it can be any type of application, uh, including the VCL application like we see here. So to trigger the notification to do a broadcast, all you really need is a one line of code. So once we have an EMS provider on here and a back end push component, all I have to do is tell it the message I want to send and then call its push uh, method and it knows how to broadcast, push that message to all of the connected uh, devices to the EMS server. So that's also pretty cool. This ends this quick how-to video, and we saw how to use Embarcadero's RAD server, Enterprise Mobility Services, EMS, to send remote push notifications.